Hi, welcome to Market in a Minute. We're still down here in Florida. It's getting a little warm, so I'll be back in Colorado next week. Um, hopefully it won't be as warm, but guaranteed it won't be as humid. Um, NVIDIA uh, reported last week, as everybody knows, and the stock went up nicely. They hit our expectations of $26 billion in revenues. Um, that was better than expected by about a billion and a half dollars. The stock reacted very positively, but the market didn't, which is kind of unusual. So we're going to talk about NVIDIA a little bit more, what that means for the market. And it's incredible that the market cap of NVIDIA is almost the same as Apple. Um, if you like NVIDIA, you got to love AMD because AMD will, will come and take some of their market share if this market's truly going to grow the way, it is, the way it has been recently. And then this is an important topic, so wait to the end to see this. But we're going to explain how I hedge portfolios, how you can do it. It's not all that complicated, but you have to, you know, really pay attention to what you're doing when you do this. So stock market update. As we mentioned, NVIDIA had a big quarter. You can see the stock ran really nicely from the start of 2024 um, and kind of went down, you know, peaked out, went down in April and then has had a parab parabolic move to the upside. So we're wondering, is this the exhaust, exhaustive move or not in the stock? It's approaching uh, one of the largest market caps in the world, right behind Apple. Um, so we're kind of wondering if this is kind of it for NVIDIA, at least for a while. Um, so NVIDIA's market cap, as we mentioned, $2.8 trillion in market cap versus Apple, $2.9 trillion. Um, you know, we're just shocked by it. So at times, markets get very exuberant. Um, but, you know, I don't think this is a lasting event because there's going to be a lot of competition coming at NVIDIA. Um, and we're, we're, we might be seeing the peak spending of, of the cycle. Uh, maybe it peaks out next year, but it's not going to grow the rate it's growing um, into next year. If you like NVIDIA, AMD is going to catch up. So look at these charts. So you can see uh, AMD uh, performing kind of in line with NVIDIA um, at least over the last 12 months until recently. So AMD, is a, they're a strong competitor. They're going to be there. They're going to get their market share in this space. So we think that this is the way to play that portion of the chip market at this point. Cheap stocks are getting cheaper. So, um, you know, expensive stocks are getting more expensive, but the cheap stuff just keeps going down. We think it's because of the lack of confidence in the durability of the economy. So much of the growth is from government. So government spending has got to slow down or contract we think if Trump gets in office, we think he's going to take a recession. He's going to pull back on the government spending and take that recession as soon as he's in office, which would be very consistent with other, other presidential market cycles. So um, we think that, you know, if looking at the economic growth, it's really questionable at this point as the consumer is being tortured by inflation. So um, we just don't see a big impetus for the economy to grow at this point. Uh, maybe it lasts until the election or maybe start to slow down as we started in the second half of the year in, in July. So that would explain why there's a, a very much a two-tiered uh, market. You can see this in the S&P 500 versus the single weight S&P 500. So we think the true measure of the market should be on the RSP or the equally weighted um, stocks in the S&P 500 that takes out the market cap bias. So the, the S&P 500 this year is low, up 11.83% versus the RSP of 47 So uh, that's quite a divergence. So when the generals get so far out in front of the troops, 
this not is not a lasting uh, occurrence, generally speaking. So, as the generals are so far out in front of the troops, you can't fight a war without the troops behind you. So either the rest of the market is going to have to start to catch up, or we're going to see a correction in the market as these larger cap companies come down. So we want to look at the S P a little bit. So it broke through that prior high. So the prior high now becomes the support line. 52.50 is the support line now, currently about 52.95. We would like to buy the market, if, if we could do this, buy the market down at the 47.69 level, which is a support level, and it's actually the 200-day moving average. So that's our hope. Um, may or may not come true, but we're looking for a correction in the markets. We've been looking for that correction for a few weeks now. Hasn't happened. But um, we think that the last remaining really good news was the NVIDIA report is now in the markets. And the markets will start to focus on interest rates and inflation. So we do have some inflation reports coming out later this week. Hedging the portfolio. So this is key to how I manage money. So if I got a portfolio of stocks or maybe I own the S&P 500 and I've got nice gains in it. I just don't want to sell it, have to have to pay those taxes. So if I'm concerned about the markets, the markets begin to roll over, I want to get defensive. So if I have the S&P 500 or a basket of stocks that look like the S&P 500, I want to hedge that with either the single or the double. I'm going to walk you through both of that of those. So if you go back to 2022, um, when the market declined roughly from high to low about 25 percent you can see that here in this blue line so down around here the market was off about that 25 percent level to be off about 20 percent for the year excluding the benefits of uh, the dividend so down about 20 percent on the s p the green line is the single inverse on the s p 500 so it went up about almost 19 percent as well so it tracks very closely the inverse movements of the S&P 500 so when the S&P 500 drops the inverse goes up almost lockstep so if you had taken your portfolio and invested roughly keep, keeping half of that um, in the S&P and putting the other half in the single inverse you would have been down about 1.2% in 2022 instead of being down roughly 20%. That's, that's, that's a pretty good trade-off. So the question is, you know, the timing and all that, we'll go, that, go through that in subsequent uh, videos. But as the market begins to roll over, when the technicals begin to deteriorate, then that's when you want to apply that hedge to the portfolio. So this is the um, the double inverse of the S&P 500 and I apologize I noticed that my my video here is covering some of these uh, charts but you can you can see these charts if you go to my website Patrick Adams CFA and get a copy of the market a minute or go to PVG asset management the company I work for and you can get a copy of the um, the text and the charts uh, become more clear. And just keep in mind, just send me a, a, a email, you can get that hard copy, we'll send it to you every week. But if you look at the SDS, okay, if you use that for hedging, and people think, oh, that's so scary to use a double inverse of the SP 500, it's really not, okay? So I think these perform really well. There is, uh, there is some deterioration in the correlation over time because of compounding, but uh, they perform really well. So you can see at the worst point of the market, these are up about 53%. So you double the 25%. These kind of outperform because of the compounding effect. So if you don't watch it in a really severe bear market, you'll become net short. So just keep that in mind. But these worked really well in 2022, protecting the portfolio. 
So if you have 50% again of the S&P 500, you put only 25% in the double inverse SDS. That leaves 25%, say to leave, uh, leave it in the money market right now and get 5%. So if you did that, um, you would have been uh, down only roughly 0.5% versus the, uh, the previous example of down 1.2%. So these actually work better. Uh, just keep in mind, if you own a, uh, an ETF, a, uh, say a short ETF, and the market goes up a lot on you, and so the, the short goes down quite a bit, the inverse goes down quite a bit, just keep in mind you can't lose any more than what you have invested in that ETF. So as an example, if you have your 50% weighting in the uh, in the a single S&P 500, so the SPY, or you have a portfolio like that. So if you have that position at 50% and the stock market goes up 100% and you, you're just clueless, you don't see it, and you keep the hedge on. So your hedge will go down quite a bit. It won't go to zero on you, but it'll go 25%. So you lose money on that position. Uh, and then you make money on the cash, uh, a little bit of money on the cash, and then you make money on that long position. So if the market goes up 100%, you make 51. The previous example, if you hedge it, you, uh, you lose 0.5%. So we think this is a pretty darn good trade-off. So inverse ETFs, double inverse ETFs, you, you have to use them, uh, we think, use them for hedging. So don't just go naked with it but use them for hedging. They're really effective on protecting your downside. Thank you very much. If you ever have any questions, just send me an email from my website. I'll reply to it. We did have an investor that was curious about how to invest in commodities because you know we like the natural gas space. We'll cover that in, in future market in minutes, but it's basically the supply and demand <laughs> dynamics about uh, about the commodity itself is what really is the fundamental driver of those uh, commodities. So again, thank you very much. Hit, please hit like, come to my website, Patrick M. CFA, sign up for a hard copy of Mark in a Minute. And again, if you have any questions, just let us know. Take care.